including LGBTQ patients in neurology. Reese is a 28-year-old patient who presents with headaches. After examination, you consider valproica acid for migraine prophylaxis. Reese's sex is listed as male in the chart, but they present as female. As the chart does not specify gender identity, you are unsure how to proceed. Neurology providers need to understand issues relating to patient's sexual orientation and gender identity in order to provide equitable clinical care. Sex is assigned at birth and includes male, female, or intersex. In contrast, gender is a social construct. Gender identity refers to a person's sense of being a woman, man, or something else on the gender spectrum. A person's gender identity may match their sex assigned at birth, cisgender, or it may differ, transgender. Gender expression is a person's external manifestation of gender based on behavior and appearance. Sexual orientation is independent of sex assigned at birth and gender, and it refers to a person's romantic or sexual attraction. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and others, aka LGBTQ individuals, report high rates of discrimination in healthcare, including 50% of lesbian, gay, and bisexual patients, and 75% of transgender patients. This is associated with inferior outcomes and patient satisfaction. Furthermore, LGBTQ patients have unique risks in neurology, including disparities in stroke, headache, and dementia. For example, one study found the incidence of stroke in transgender women receiving hormone therapy was 142% higher than cisgender women and 80% higher than cisgender men. Neurology providers need to foster an inclusive environment in order to close disparities. This includes asking open-ended questions and avoiding assumptions. For example, instead of using wife or husband, use significant other or spouse until the person identifies the appropriate term. It is also important to ask about the name and pronouns a patient uses. You can also create an inclusive environment through nonverbal cues, for example, by wearing a rainbow pin, indicating pronouns on your name tag, having gender-inclusive restrooms, including LGBTQ magazines and resources in the waiting room, and displaying an inclusive non-discrimination statement in your office. It is also essential that sexual orientation and gender identity are systematically collected in the electronic health record in a culturally responsive manner. Accompanied by appropriate training, this improves clinical care and identifies ongoing disparities in need of intervention. Returning to our case, you learn that Reese's pronouns are she and her. She confirms that she was assigned male sex at birth, but identifies as a woman. Reese is not pursuing gender affirmation steps such as hormones or surgical therapies. You both agree that valproic acid's teratogenic risk does not apply to her, although she is a woman of childbearing age. You also review the possible androgenic effects of valproic acid. You update the chart indicating her gender identity and use the she-her pronouns in your note. With these simple strategies, you can build rapport with your patient and provide her with personalized and respectful care. For more information on LGBTQ health in neurology, please see the course resources.